We are in Baden-Baden after the seventh round of the Grand Cat Chess Classic and we're going to look at the games, our daily recap with Grandmaster Jan Gustafsson. Let's have a look at the game. Let's start with the longest game of the day, Fasci Lagraf against uh, Vallejo. Long game, what happened? I'm not sure. Vallejo played the French defense and I guess Maxime surprised him with his move 3 e5. The advanced variation sort of an old line that's not that popular at the highest level. and. Vallejo decided to lock the structure very early on with the move 6 pawn to c4, which once again is a line that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, but we don't see so much nowadays. After that, it was a maneuvering battle with a lot of subtlety, some of them over my head, frankly. I had the feeling Vallejo controlled the game quite well and knew what he was doing when he went for this h5, forcing Maxim to shut the position completely with pawn to g5. After that, Maxim could only break through, sacrificing either a piece or a pawn, as he did with f5. But Vallejo still had enough resources to keep everything covered. And even though it was the longest fight of the day, I don't think the balance was ever disturbed. And especially black played quite well to keep it together. So hard, hard for draw. Hard for draw. We have another draw today. Vincent Keimer against Peter Switler. Vincent seems to feel confident in this tournament now. It's easier to play after you scored one and a half out of two out of the last two games and he's seen he can play with these guys not only in his losses but especially in this draw he made from the position of strength against Levon. So his confidence is growing. And today it was an unspectacular game. I think Vincent was surprised in the openings. Fiddler usually doesn't play the Queen's Indian. And both sides seem to be sort of freestyling to me early on. Vincent came up with this creative f3 knight to e4. But Svidler reacted very solidly. After that, White was maybe slightly, slightly better, but never close to winning. And then the position became equal. And some logical exchanges, rook ending and draw. So good result for Vincent, of course. Good result. Another good result for the world champion. He keeps on winning, this time against Levon Aronian. Yeah. They played the Vienna variation, which Levon has been playing on and off over the years. Very sharp forcing line, but Magnus managed to play move move 10, I believe, this bishop back to d2. That looks very, very stupid and had never been played before in a position that has been played thousands of times. But of course, it took Levon by surprise because of its stupid looks. And Aronian reacted quickly with his castles and e5. There were alternatives. You could maybe take a hot pawn on e4. But the way the game went, I think Magnus was quite happy because he got a playable position with an unbalanced structure. We doing the commentary thought that Levon was completely fine. But Magnus pointed out, and he's probably right, that Black just doesn't have a very constructive plan and some long-term problems. And Aronian, sort of uncharacteristically, also got into very serious time trouble. At some point we were watching the video feed. He was down to four seconds to make his move. And if you find it hard to have a plan and are in such time trouble against Magnus Carlsen, things will often go downhill. In the game, his position probably was unpleasant already, and then he forced the issue with this f5 and e4 going for activity, but it backfired and Magnus won. Well, reasonably easily, I would say, compared to the hard work he's had to do in pretty much all his other games so far today was only three and a half, four hours. So, well, champion on plus four, things are looking good. Yes, very good. And it looked quite good today for Georg Meyer, who finally won his first game against nothing against uh, Vichy Arnand. And I've spoken to him. He said he had never lost a classical game against Vichy. So he has a plus score against the former world champion. It's quite an effort. No, many players can say that, I think. Absolutely. They had drawn three games so far. And two of these previous three draws were in this Rubinstein variation they kept discussing today. Where Vichy, I think, followed a game they had here maybe last year or two years ago until move 14 or something, where it deviated with rookie ones of c3. At first it looked, at least according to the computer, that Vichy got a better position with his key move f takes g3. And the computer liked his chances, but the position is very weird and it's not easy to figure out what goes where. It looked to me like Vichy might have gone astray with his move pawn to g4. Once again, look natural, but that allowed Georg to play queen d6, targeting the pawn on h2. Then things got very complicated, but it always looked like black was the side pushing. And then, very surprisingly to me, Vichy collapsed by missing a trick in this double rook ending. The double rook ending was probably already unpleasant, and I've heard some grandmaster telling me 
that it might have been lost even with perfect play, but Vichy lost to Rook in a double Rook ending, which is bad news. And yeah, big, big point for Georg Meyer. And we have another win today. Uh, Fabiano won against uh, Arkady Najdic. Going to look at the position later on, but what can you tell about the game? Yeah, Fabiano played one d4. Of course, he can play anything, but in the match he played more e4. This time it was d4 and a debate in the Catalan where I believe Arkady surprised him with his choice of line, not a line that Arkady normally plays. And it seemed like Arkady actually got a good position out of the opening, we'll look at the position a bit outside of the opening in a minute. But then he could not find this one trick we'll see later. And must have miscalculated something, Fabiano, of course, a fantastic calculator. And once the position clarified a little bit, it turned out that Caruana was just a pawn up with a better position, which he converted pretty effortlessly. So Caruana on plus two, pretty much the only guy left within striking distance of Magnus Carlsen means we have the world number one in first place, world number two in second place, as it should be. Yeah. So this is a position outside of the opening from that Karana versus Nidic game, where Karana has just grabbed a very hot pawn on d4. He's a pawn up, but he's had to misplace his queen on b5. And here it's black to move, and Nidic has to find a way to prove compensation for that pawn. The computer says the move rook to d5 is a good move, but the reason I chose this position is because black he has a very cute tactical trick here that was pointed out by Magnus Carlsen in analysis. So it seems like the world champion had enough time to walk around and find ideas even for other players. And he mentioned that black had the very nice move knight takes b3 here, sacrificing his knight. The point being that after knight takes b3, rook to d5, attacking the queen. The queen only has one square, queen to c4, rook to c8. This queen gets trapped in the middle of the board, which you don't see very often. But as you can see, it doesn't have anywhere to go. So white would have to return his piece here with knight to c5, accepting a worse position where black is more active with equal material. And who knows how the game would have ended. It looked like Karana would have had to struggle for a draw then. But he got, or I don't know if lucky, but Akari missed that chance with knight takes b3. And instead, the game went the other way very quickly. Knight played bishop to c3, also looks natural, targeting this knight. But the problem is that whenever it gets taken, this guy is also hanging. And Karana very calmly replied with rook ac1, pawn to a6, and queen to e5, stepping into all kinds of pins. But Karana is a great calculator, and he's seen that there will always be something hanging in the black camp as well. The game proceeded with, I think, bishop takes f3, bishop f3, bishop d4. And here we see the problem that this knight on a5 drops, and Karana was just a pawn up with a good position, which he went to convert. So, victory for Fabian Karana.